Narcissists can infect our minds and turn some of us into people that we don't recognize anymore. They can change the way that we look and act, the things that we think that we want, the things that motivate us. In this video, I'm going to go over the ways that narcissists take advantage of our vulnerabilities and change the way that we think. Welcome to Looking Behind the Mirror, where we explore narcissism and take our lives back as we make sense out of nonsense. As a quick disclaimer, everything I say is based on my opinions and my personal experiences. I'm not a professional, and if you're really struggling, I encourage you to seek professional help. I am providing links below for you. I'm going to go over three main areas in this video of ways that narcissists infect the way that we think. They change the way that we think about what we want in our lives, what motivates us, what our purpose is, what we think we want to spend our time doing. They can also change the way we think about other people, the opinions we have of others, the way that we treat others, the way we feel about others. And most importantly, they can change the way that we think about ourselves, how we measure our own self-worth what we think of ourselves, what we think that we should be spending our time doing. Before I go into these three areas, I want to explain the leverage that narcissists create with vulnerable people. Vulnerable being the key word. Many of us, probably all of us, at some point in our adult lives will experience times where we're very vulnerable. We will experience times where we are searching for something where we feel unfulfilled or we feel like there's something that we're reaching for or something that we desperately want. This could be all kinds of things. We may be at a stage in our life where we really feel like we need more money or maybe we feel very unfulfilled and trapped in our career or maybe we're very alone and we feel like we need some friends. Maybe we feel like nobody understands us and we feel like we would really like a community that understands us. Maybe we just w would like a boyfriend or a girlfriend. It could be all kinds of things. There are all kinds of things that people will feel unfulfilled and unsatisfied about. And many times when we're in this situation, we might not even be able to put our finger on what it is that we want so badly, on why we feel this emptiness. And it's not uncommon at all for people to get confused about what it is they really want. To say to themselves, if only I had more money, then I would feel fulfilled. Or if only I had a boyfriend, or if only I had more friends, or if only I had a bigger house. Or if only I had a few more customers at my business. Thinking that these are the things that we really want. If we just had a little more of this or a little more of that, we would finally feel fulfilled. But really, we don't even know what it is we really want because when we reach these things, we don't feel any more fulfillment than we did before. Narcissists take advantage of this part of human nature that keeps us on hamster wheels, that keeps us chasing and chasing and yearning and yearning for something that some of us may not even be able to articulate, may not even be able to define to ourselves. I don't think that most narcissists consciously do this. I don't think that they're necessarily that smart, that they can really sit and think all this up and be this deliberate. I mean, I think some of them are. I have known uh, at least one that really actually devoted their life to figuring out how to manipulate people. So I know that this does happen, but I think in general, most narcissists are just running on automatic and they just naturally learn throughout their lives how to manipulate people and how to get people to do what they want. But it doesn't really matter if a narcissist knows exactly what they're doing or doesn't because the results are the same. So the first area I wanted to cover, how narcissists change the way that we think about our lives, our purpose, what we want, what we're striving for. This is an area where a narcissist may fool us into believing that that emptiness, that vulnerability can be filled by doing whatever it is that they want us to do. 
And of course, we never really reach that feeling of fulfillment, no matter how hard it is we try to do whatever it is that they're convincing us to do. But the answer, unfortunately, usually seems to be to just double down and keep trying and keep doing what it is they want us to do. A really simple kind of silly example of this would be if you were with a narcissist that loved rock climbing and wanted you to go rock climbing with let's make it a guy with him let's say that your vulnerability is that you want love and acceptance and let's say that you're not really conscious of this you don't really realize that this emptiness inside of you is coming from a lack of feeling loved and feeling accepted you're not really sure where this feeling's coming from but this narcissist that you're with is offering you what seems to be love and acceptance when you go rock climbing with him, okay? And let's say that this narcissist is constantly encouraging you, aka pressuring you and bullying you into rock climbing harder, faster, I don't know anything about rock climbing, but <laughs> doing things that you don't feel comfortable doing, doing things that are way out of your, your comfort zone and your skill level, but the more you try, you're intermittently given love and acceptance because you're rock climbing. And this kind of tricks your brain into thinking that you love rock climbing and thinking that rock climbing is the fulfillment of your life and that if you keep rock climbing, you're gonna find your purpose and that you can't live without rock climbing because really the narcissist is conditioning you to replace love and acceptance with rock climbing because they give you love and acceptance intermittently when you rock climb. I know this is a silly example, but it could be absolutely anything that they want you to do. Maybe learn how to cook for them, maybe work for free at their business or, or whatever. Doing what they want, what serves them and conditioning you to believe that this emptiness and this vulnerability that you feel is gonna be fulfilled by doing what they want and tricking you into believing that that's really what you want out of your life, that you really actually do love rock climbing. The insidious part of this is that you lose touch with what you really like. You lose touch with what you really want in life. You can actually be convinced that your passion in life is something that you never would have been interested in otherwise. This can be flipped around the other way too, and you can be convinced that you don't like something that you actually might have a passion for. Let's say that you naturally love crochet. You have a passion for crochet. I, I actually do crochet. This blanket's kind of wonky, but um, it was just a fun little project that I did. But let's say that you love crochet, but every time you crochet, the narcissist withholds love and acceptance by maybe making fun of you or telling you that's just for old ladies or criticizing your work or telling you that you're wasting time or demanding that you pay attention to them. They're withholding what you really want, what you're really looking for, where that emptiness is really coming from, the love and acceptance. And they're conditioning you to believe that you really don't like crochet because every time you go to crochet, the narcissist takes away the thing that you actually want that actually is going to fulfill you. And all of this is done subconsciously. You don't even realize that you actually hate rock climbing and you really do love crochet because the narcissist is using your vulnerability to control the way that you think, to shape the way that you look at the world and to completely lose sight of the things that will actually fulfill you, of the things that you actually want to do and the things that you don't want to do. This is a manipulation technique that puts people on hamster wheels, puts people continuing to try and try and try and try to make the narcissist happy by doing whatever it is the narcissist has convinced them will bring them fulfillment. If you just keep rock climbing, you keep practicing, keep pushing yourself, that's gonna give you that fulfillment. And when you never feel fulfilled, no matter how good you get at rock climbing, you still feel so empty and alone and listless. You keep thinking, well, I just need to get better at rock climbing. I just need to keep trying and, and keep striving. It's my fault. You blame yourself because you've also been conditioned to think that, that it's a feeling on your part when really it's just a failure to understand what it is that you actually wanted and 
how you've been manipulated to serve somebody else's needs with a promise that you would be rewarded eventually. And of course that promise is never fulfilled. Another area in which narcissists can change the way we think is the way that they can change the way we think about other people, other people in our lives, potential friends or existing friends, coworkers, family members, people we just met. Narcissists can control the way that we think and completely change the impressions we get of other people. People that we may have normally been really great friends with, we might disdain. Or people that we normally wouldn't have trusted and wouldn't have wanted to spend any time with, we might end up spending a lot of time with them and having them be part of our social circle. Narcissists use the same kind of vulnerabilities that they use when they're trying to manipulate our drive in life and what we strive for in life. They use those same vulnerabilities to control the way that we think about other people. They reward us for going along with their opinion, for being part of the us versus them. Narcissists like to create a sort of cult of one around them. You're either in the club or you're out of the club. There's nothing in between. You're either in the narcissist's good graces or you are somebody that nobody should ever talk to again. It's very cult-like. If we go back to this vulnerability of feeling like we need love and acceptance in our lives and feeling like we don't have the love and acceptance that we need, narcissists can take advantage of this by making us feel loved and accepted if we are part of us if we are in the in crowd and separating us from people that are part of them, separating us and creating this feeling within us that it's very, very important to stay in the in crowd, to stay part of us. To be part of us is to be loved and accepted, to be special. Narcissists make the us crowd feel like they're special, like they're smart or they have some kind of quality that the them people don't have. And for anybody that is really striving for love and acceptance and community, to be part of them, to be exiled into the them crowd can be really, really frightening and a very good manipulation tool for a narcissist. So narcissists that really have a lot of control over you that have really made you feel really special and fulfilled this need that you have for love and acceptance. A narcissist in this position has an enormous amount of leverage because they know how to turn on the threat of kicking you out into the them crowd. They know how important it is to you to stay in the us crowd. And the reason that this is so important to a narcissist is because it just makes them feel like the center of the universe. It just confirms to them that they are the most important person that ever existed or the only person that actually ever matters because it confirms to them that they and they alone get to sit and decide who matters and who doesn't and that people will crawl all over themselves trying to stay in the us crowd because the narcissist has enough power to get people to practically grovel to win and keep their approval. And they just couldn't care less about the collateral damage, which is all the relationships that they ruin. You know, all the friends, all the real friends you could have made, all the people that you could have connected with, and, and relationships that you ruined needlessly in order to please the narcissist. I mean, narcissists could not care less about any of that. So a narcissist might say things to you like, you're so smart, or you're so nice, or you're so trustworthy, or you're so hardworking, not like so-and-so, not like this other person. And they create these walls and the, the, these divisions where you feel like, oh, I, I'm getting validated, I'm so smart, or I'm so hardworking, or I'm so whatever not like that person. Oh, well, wow, I don't wanna be like that person over there. I mean, I wanna be over here where I'm being recognized for whatever quality it is that this narcissist is manipulating me with. 
And it's funny, if you're in a relationship of it, not just a romantic relationship, any type of relationship with a narcissist long enough, no matter how much they talked you up in the beginning, no matter how many compliments they gave you or how much they encouraged you, eventually you're going to be the one that they're talking down to about to other people. You're gonna be the one that they criticize behind your back to fresh victims that are now trying to be special and in the us crowd. And it's just this constant recycling of people that they go through that makes them feel important, I guess. And the really insidious part of this is the way that they will make you view other people, the way that they will infect your mind and make you judge other people. And of course, we're all accountable for what we do, so I don't really wanna skip over that. Narcissists don't force anybody to do anything but they take advantage of our vulnerabilities. And I think that's really important to acknowledge. We don't go into this consciously understanding what we're doing. When we're judging somebody else that's been put in the them category because we're being manipulated with our deepest wants and desires and fears, it's not really fair to completely blame somebody that's being manipulated in this way because we're really not conscious of, of what it is that we're doing. We're really kind of being tricked into viewing the world and viewing other people in an inaccurate way. This is taking advantage of a weakness that we might have, a weakness that we need to work on, but a weakness that we might not even be aware of. You can't solve a problem or work on a weakness that you don't understand that you have. Sometimes you really have to learn the hard way. So a narcissist might say something to you like, hey, so-and-so, I think she might be up to something. Can you keep an eye on her for me? And that might make you feel special like, oh, the narcissist trusts me. I'm in the circle. I'm part of the us crowd. Wow. And they want me to keep an eye. Well, yeah, she's probably up to something. I mean, I don't think that he or she would be suspecting her of anything if she wasn't doing something wrong. So I better keep an eye on her since I'm the trustworthy one. And then this puts a big division between you and this person you're supposed to be keeping tabs on because now she's part of the them crowd and you're part of the us crowd. And you might not even know that maybe the narcissist is saying exactly the same thing to her about you. And I've actually seen this type of scenario, not exactly this, but, but really similar, where these two people ended up bitter enemies and neither one of them really started it in the first place. It was all being manipulated by the narcissist taking advantage of the things that these people wanted more than anything in the world and completely losing sight of what the purpose of anything they were doing even was in the first place. A narcissist might have you look at somebody that really cares about you as someone that's not supportive or not on board or doesn't understand you. Maybe somebody that would say something like, isn't rock climbing a little little dangerous? Or are you sure you should be rock climbing there? That, that doesn't look safe. I mean, you've only been doing this for a few months. I'm worried that you might hurt yourself. And the narcissist, will put that person in the them category and call them a hater or somebody that just doesn't believe in you. And you might be so hungry for this love and acceptance that you believe that, embrace that and think, wow, I thought that that person cared about me, but really they're just trying to hold me back. When you're under the control of a narcissist, when a narcissist is successfully manipulating you, you aren't going to have a realistic view of anyone. You're not going to be able to view anyone through a realistic lens, neither the narcissist nor anybody else in your life, because everything's going to be filtered through the vulnerabilities that the narcissist is taking advantage of. And the last area I want to talk about the way that narcissists change the way that we think is the way that narcissists is the way that narcissists change the way that we think about ourselves. Narcissists can, like I said earlier, make us believe that our lack of fulfillment or our inability to finally reach these goals, to finally find the things that fulfill us, that make us feel like we have purpose, that our failure to do this is completely our fault. 
that we didn't try hard enough to achieve their goals for us and that that was our fault and that that's why we feel like we're not good enough now or that we're missing something in our life. When in reality, it was only because we really weren't doing anything for ourselves or for the things that we actually really wanted, but that our deepest wants and fears and desires were hijacked by somebody that took advantage of them. Your self-worth, your sense of self-worth becomes completely tied to the narcissist and what the narcissist thinks of you. You lose your ability to judge for yourself with confidence what you think of yourself, what you think you should be spending your time doing. And you end up looking to the narcissist. If the narcissist thinks that I've done good enough, if the narcissist approves, then I'll be worthy. Then I'll have a good sense of self-worth. So you end up tying your self-esteem directly to the minute by minute mood swings of somebody with the emotional maturity of a three-year-old. And over time, the more that this affects us, the more that we start to lose touch with ourselves, the more we lose touch with what we want or what is even real or what we even want to spend our time doing anymore, the narcissist can take advantage of this as well and start causing us to question our own mental health. Narcissists have been known to start suggesting that maybe you have a mental illness. Maybe you should go see a psychologist. I, I'm really worried about you. I think something might be wrong with you. Something's wrong with you. It's never, you know, maybe I've been driving you insane and the results are finally showing. It's, wow, something's wrong with you. You better go get that checked out. And we can really start internalizing and believing this because it is so convincing. When we get too wrapped up with a narcissist and spend too much time with a narcissist trying to make a narcissist happy, we completely lose touch of who we are, what we want, what makes us feel fulfilled, what our purpose is, what our passion in life is, what we even think about other people, what we think of ourselves. We end up chasing things on a hamster wheel, chasing things that we don't even really want, thinking that that's gonna be the answer and abandoning the things that really are important to us, abandoning relationships that could have been part of the fulfillment that we're really looking for. And narcissists will have us believe that not reaching these unattainable goals or these things that we want that we can't even define is ultimately our fault for not trying hard enough to please them. Narcissists pretend to offer the answer to what it is we want most out of life when many times we can't even articulate what those things are. They promise to make all of our dreams come true. They promise to make all of those feelings of emptiness go away, whether they do that specifically consciously out loud or whether it's a subconscious feeling, whether they make us feel like they're going to be able to solve these problems for us. But in the end, narcissists not only will never ever deliver these promises to you, but by the time you get to this point, you might have lost sight of what any of the things that you originally wanted even were. If you're looking for a way to support my channel and you're considering professional therapy, BetterHelp is offering 10% off your first month if you sign up using the link below in my description. And if you sign up using the link below in my description, I'll get a one-time commission. So that's a great way to help me out if that's something that you are considering doing. I hope this helps. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment below any ideas you have for me for future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this video and would like to see more like it in the future. Until next time, thanks, bye.